Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond. Welcome to part two of my unboxing of the uh, Reaper Bones 5 Kickstarter. You can find part one on my channel as well. You can also click the I in the upper right corner of this video. And this was such a long unboxing that I had to cut it in two parts. So let's quickly get started with part two. So here's a, another batch of Reaper Bones that I put together. So let's start with the small ones here. So these are some adventures once again. Some of these are again multi-part, some are not. So we have a female adventurer here. Could be an elf, could be a human. Uh, she's got a cutlass there. Nice detail on the, on the belt. Uh, some items on the belt as well. There seems to be a little pouch there. Um, she's got a cape, she's got some armor. She's standing with her foot on a little treasure chest, which is kind of nice. So uh, that's pretty cool. So we have that. Then we have this one, which I believe was a multi-part. So he comes with a separate base and arms. So I've left the base on the table for now. So this gentleman seems to be some kind of sorcerer. He's got a staff. Maybe he's a druid. Also with lots of stuff on his belt. He's got a dagger and a canteen. He's got some armor on and a large cape. He's got a little creature sitting on his shoulder, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm guessing he's a druid. And uh, so that's a little bear-like creature, which is pretty fun. Some kind of, I don't know, a raccoon or something. <laughs> but it looks pretty fun. And uh, I think the hand with the sleeve was a separate part. I glued that already. And this is a separate part. I don't even remember if I glued it. <laughs> I left several things overnight to dry. So this is one which comes with his own base as well. Then we have this sorceress or druidess. Uh, she's got the horns, the antlers, I should say. So probably, oh, yeah, and this also has a separate arm here that you need to glue and uh, will hold like that with a lantern on the staff and this hand was also a separate part i think i did glue that one and she has lots of little uh, flasks and pouches hanging from her belt and uh, clothing so she's got a dagger and a sickle and some of these little pots a pouch which is pretty cool and uh, she's, she's got a dress and uh, lots of thick hair, which is pretty cool. And the staff, again, with the lantern, which came off because I still need to glue that, but it's, I'll leave that off. Oh, focus for, you know, ease of painting. There we go. This is the whole thing. So we have that one. Next, another multi-part miniature. Has a separate head. And uh, maybe that was it. Maybe the, the arm as well, I'm, I don't recall. So uh, he's kind of like uh, some sort of tinkerer. He has like a monocle, a monocle, <laughs> and a dagger and stuff again, a canteen and a pouch hanging from his belt. He's hunched over quite a bit. I believe the torso and the lower body are also separate part. And uh, he's got lots of little uh, boxes on his back. Another canteen there. Some bones. All kinds of stuff. There's another bone. There's a... Uh, maybe there's a spell in there. So, yeah. Interesting looking figure. Uh, would make a nice NPC too. Then I have these cat folk. So we did have cat folk in uh, Reaper Bones 5. So there we go. This is the first one. Uh, cat folk warrior in full armor with a sword and a shield. The sword has really cool an embossed ball of wool <laughs> on it, which is pretty funny. Here's the tail. So we have that character, looks really nice. 
And then we have this one, a catfolk sorceress, I believe, or sorcerer. Yeah, maybe sorcerer. Uh, or druid. Uh, there's a staff. There's some feathers on the staff. So, yeah, I mean, feathers, obviously, for catfolk, since they eat birds, might just be decoration, but might also indicate that this is a druid. Whatever you want it to be. Then we have uh, this one, Archer. Also nice, holding the bow, drawing the string with the quiver on the back, with some arrows in it, and again, some details nice on the belt. And the fur is also nicely detailed with these guys, I think. And there's a lot of detail there going on on the front of the armor as well. And they all also come on a sculpted uh, base. As you can see, there is some uh, sculpting there, some cobblestones. So we have those. There is a, another fighter or rogue, since he doesn't just, or she, he or she doesn't have a, not only a sword, but also a pouch with uh, some loot in it, no doubt. So, uh, yeah, looks like a rogue or a thief. The back of the clothing also nicely detailed. So that's a fun model as well. Not that much sculpting on this base, to be fair. It's uh, it's not entirely flat, but uh, there aren't any lines uh, to indicate cobblestones or anything. And then finally, this one again with a better sculpted base. Uh, a warrior with an axe, two-handed axe. A really strong looking fellow, bulky. He's a little bit bigger than the others. Uh, got a sword in its sheath on the back. And minimum, minimum armor. So just some uh, shoulder pads. And uh, yeah, that, that's it mostly. Some straps to uh, carry the sword. So yeah. Nice looking character, is also a multi-part character. The arms with the axe are a separate part. So those are all the smaller heroes or NPCs. And we have this little monster, which I rather like. It's kind of a impish looking a demon with tiny arms in the front there and the wings spread out. Also on a sculpted base. Back of the mini looks like this. A little bit of detail on the spine there. But yeah, it's a one part figure. That's pretty cool. We have this flying horror. I don't know exactly what it is. I couldn't find it on the Kickstarter page. It kind of looks like a Lovecraftian horror with the mouth there. But there might be some kind of D&D uh, like creature as well. So very leathery wings. Uh, rib cage showing and a rib cage and the body as you can see there is a line there uh, right there uh, that is a two-part creature as well you just glue the bottom and the top together and uh, there's the mouth there or maw and a pointy tail and this comes there's a hole in the belly there this comes with this base which is basically just some uh, stalagmites. And I believe one of those will fit into this cavity. I don't know which way around. It's a little bit finicky. Couldn't really tell, to be honest. I think it's supposed to go on like this, but it comes loose very easily. So you just have to turn it around until you find a spot that kind of holds but it didn't really hold, so that's going to need some glue and maybe some filing. All right, then we have this basilisk, which again comes with its own base. Uh, so we have a sculpted base, just some dirt really, with some pegs for all of its feet. So if I put it on here, oh, the head comes loose, of course. <laughs> so let me just put that back there. 
yeah, so I'm just going to put this down. So this is a uh, eight-legged basilisk. Looks pretty cool. I really like the ridges there. Uh, all of the uh, scales are nicely sculpted. There's some scales as well on the uh, feet. Kind of looks like chicken feet. The head is also nicely detailed. So yeah, even the bottom is not bad. It's, it has less detail. Oh, stay focused. See, the bottom is kind of smooth here, but uh, you're not going to see much of that anyway. And, you know, these lizards might have a very soft underbelly. Then we have some of these dark riders. These are also multi-part, so I'm going to be careful here. I haven't glued them, but uh, they come with their own base. And basically there's a rider and a horse, which are separate parts. These dark riders, they kind of remind me of Nazgul. They probably were meant to look like Nazgul. So they have, you know, there it is, this, the horse and the rider and their separate base. So also looking pretty nice. You can see all the uh, straps on the horse's uh, gear. I don't know what all of that is called. The reins and such. Saddle. A nice looking sword. So that's one of these. And there's three. I'll just put that down. Uh, here is another. They're all differently sculpted, which is nice. In different poses. And they have, you know, you can see some hints of armor. And they have these shin guards, and they have a dagger and a sword, all kinds of weapons. And of course the cape. So that's, that's the second one. Third one keeps falling apart, and I'm not gluing it yet. I want to paint, maybe I'll glue this leg so he has a separate leg here. <laughs> so that's a two-part figure. And then there's the horse and the base. So again, wielding a dagger and a sword, basically the same figure, but in a different pose. They're, you know, completely new sculpts, different unique sculpts, and that sits on top of the horse. And this horse is uh, rearing. Let me see if I can show you how that works. Now it's going to fall off. So I'll just hold it <laughs> carefully. So there you go. This is more or less what it's going to look like when it's glued on top of the horse. So yeah, it doesn't really want to work with me here. And of course, it also comes with a base, slightly sculpted, to uh, put the horse on. So the three dark riders, then we have this guy here, this... Uh, Dungeon dwelling creature it also comes with its own sculpted base. Oh, let me just put that up here. So there you go. This is the base. The creature goes on here. It's kind of like a some kind of slug. The mouth, the maw here is also two part, and the two uh, claws over there also separate parts, which I did glue because they are not in the way of painting. So it has all these tentacles on its lower jaw, some teeth there on the upper jaw, and the two scythe-like claws. So that's pretty cool, kind of killer slug. So we have that. Then we've got this kind of like a satyr, again, with its own base. There we go, just a round base with some sculpting on it. Some rocks, some grass, maybe. And the satyr itself has a separate backpack, which also has plenty of detail. I like that backpack. I really like how that's made. Some kind of wicker basket. There's a bell there and a, a hand. So it's probably keeping all kinds of body parts in there. There's a foot sticking out. That's pretty cool. 
another bell. So it's some kind of monster, maybe something from folklore, some kind of satyr who comes to steal your children or something, or eats people. It's got a hand with a club, which is also a separate part. At the wrist, you have to glue it. So, uh, yeah. Maybe the bells and the... You see, he has some bells here too, and the, the little uh, fringe here looks like fur. Um, and I believe the upper torso and the lower part are also a separate part. Uh, the name escapes me. There's some kind of folklore tale of a evil kind of Santa Claus uh, counterpart. There, there was even a movie on it, which I remember was a pretty fun movie. Uh, I don't, don't remember the name. It'll come to me. Maybe it's this. It's supposed to be this. <laughs> All right, so we have that one with its own base. Then we have this uh, cool looking uh, lion dragon, which again, multi-part. So, uh, well, the main body here and the wings are also separate parts, but it's pretty cool. It's a lion dragon or dragon lion. <laughs> and it has a separate tail here, which goes on like that. You have to really push it in with a nice looking tail. So there is lots of scales, but also fur, which is pretty cool. It's nicely uh, combined into one figure. And also comes with this nice looking sculpted base with rocks on it. It's a pretty cool base. And this slot is for the tail and these two are for the hind legs. So we have that, and of course with the uh, other front paw here, like that, which is kind of raised up to, uh, to strike in a cat-like fashion. So yeah, that's a, a pretty nice sculpt, it's fairly big, looks like a, you know, large even for a lion, it's a dragon lion, so it's slightly bigger than a regular lion. Then we have this thing, which I honestly did not know what that was. And I looked it up and it was called, let me check that again, a Ketoblepas, Ketoblepas or whatever. <laughs> Some strange monster, I don't know from what, kind of like Numenera-ish. They have these weird monsters. So it's, its head is a two part, the lower jaw and the upper jaw, the skull, is basically two parts that you stick onto the neck. There's plenty of detail on the skin here, all these strange looking scales. There's these ridges on the back, has the tail with the club. The tail is a separate piece, the club there is a separate piece, but uh, looks quite funny actually. It's an interesting looking creature. And which again comes with its own base here, sculpted once again with a tree stump and moss growing over everything, I suppose. And you can put it on there as well. Now these, most of these need a little bit of hot water treatment before they will actually fit. So that's gonna be a little bit of work that I need to do. And finally, there's the thing in the well so this was also multi-part. There's the well itself. There's the main body, this brain-like body, and every tentacle is also a separate part. I just pressed them together. Uh, you do end up seeing some um, seams, but I mean, it's not too bad if it's all glued together well. The water was also a separate piece into the well. Um, but maybe you want to fill some of these seams with some green stuff or, I mean, it doesn't really stick out that badly. You can see the seams, but since they're at the edge of the well, um, it's not too bad. There's another seam there. But this actually was quite easy to put together straight from the bag and did not need any hot water treatment uh, before putting this together. 
uh, it does need glue, of course. As you can see, these are simply placed in slots on the base in the water. But this is pretty cool looking and nicely detailed monster coming out of a well. And, you know, if you want to, you can actually take this out and just use the well. If you paint the inside with, you know, you don't just paint it blue or something if you want to still be able to put in the monster afterwards. I'll take off the... Um, so yeah, you can't just put the water in sadly and this has some notches here and there so there is only one way to put this in so which is this this does you know i might actually put this in hot water but it only fits in like this and then of course you know you have the nice water but there are all these holes for the tentacles and this for the main body so yeah or you could make your own insert if you're handy with simply water so but that's a pretty cool miniature as well okay let's look at some others all right so here's the next batch of miniatures that i pulled from the baggies so we've got some um, some uh, medieval looking zombies all with their own bases so have this guy here so here's your you know, kind of like a standard zombie with the cobblestone base. Here's another one in uh, medieval clothing. So these will go well with your fantasy uh, sessions or games. They would also make, you know, nice extra walkers for your uh, Black Plague zombie side game, for example. So yeah, looking nice. It's always good to have some extra zombies. And another one here, a female zombie, long hair, cobblestone base. So yep, four of those. Then we have some uh, dark elves, all female, there's three of them. This uh, one looks like uh, a sorceress or a an alchemist or something. She has some pouches of all kinds of stuff. She's holding a file or, s or something uh, that might have some kind of potion in it. She's got a little uh, casket on the back, uh, a little barrel and all kinds of stuff and a pouch and this um, wicker basket. So she's carrying a lot. She might be some kind of alchemist. Then we have this fighter, which also was a multi-part figure. There were the legs with the base, the torso, the head, this arm, which was a little bit of a pain to fit into a socket, didn't really fit. And this triangular socket here is for the shield. I'll see if I can put that on. There you go. So, yeah, it, it, of course it comes loose, but uh, this fits in here so she also has a shield looking pretty cool nice pose nice detail the shield is going to fall off so i'm just going to carefully turn it around like this nice cape some armor there i like the skulls in the in the armor as well so there's that one with the shield then we have this archer, dark elf. It's also nicely detailed, lots of details in the sculpting. So yeah, the ranger or archer. Those are the three dark elves. Then we have a set of five just elves. They could be wood elves or whatever. They're all archers. They're all on their cobblestone bases and they basically all look the same just in different poses so this guy ready to fire an arrow uh, drawing the string with a quiver on the back so there's him and here's another one again with the separate bases so they i haven't glued them to the bases yet with the pointy uh hood 
which is pretty fun. This one wielding his sword and a dagger. But it's again, it's the same guy, basically. So they might be elven guards, you know, in the same outfit with the bow and the quiver on the back. We have this one scouting ahead, keeping a, an eye out for intruders. Also pretty fun. All right. Then we have this one who is drawing a bow from uh, an arrow from his quiver. The sword on the belt there. And finally, the fifth one here is uh, basically at ease, just holding uh, his hands on his weapons. So, yeah. And you could technically, oh, yeah, the quiver is a separate part. So you can paint the cape and then put on the quiver and paint that as well. So you could have a hero ranger or an elfish ranger and just use the same model for different poses if you'd like to. Uh, this little creature also came with the dark elf uh, females, but you can of course use it for whatever. So a little uh, tree stump little guy. It's pretty nice. All right, we have the pizza dragon uh, mascot. So here is the little dragon wearing uh, uh, the cook's clothing and a cook's hat. And he's got his hand stretched out for this little pizza here. And if you will focus on that, see there, a little sculpted pizza that he can hold in his hand more or less like this. And you have to glue it together, but there's a slot on the bottom uh, there for, for the hand, as you can see. And he's got a base. It's a plain base, just has the um, slots for the feet. So yeah, you can make whatever you want on that base. Uh, we have this little oh dragling. It's also a multi-part uh, model. You clearly see the seams here, so I have to really press that in. And still, there are some seams visible. So yeah, that might need a little bit of filling. But it's a nicely detailed sculpt as well. I like the wings, the little bones in there, and all the scales. It does look nice. Nice little dragon on its own base as well. Just put it next to it. Oh, it's going to fall over. Then we have this Vampire Lord, which is also a multi-part. I'll just show you the base first. This is the base, which is a set of stairs. Nice big stones. There's a skull there, and this will sit on top of that. And the sculpt itself has the legs and the torso as a separate part. So you'll have to glue that in like that to have the full figure. This was pretty loose, so uh, definitely need to glue that. But yeah, nice armor. I love all the ridges there and the pauldrons and everything. The sword with the bat wings and the big cape. That looks really nice. As he comes down the stairs, the cape is, you know, uh, on the stairs. So that's a really nice looking figure as well. All right, so we have that one. And we have this fellow here. Strong looking fellow with a bald head and mustache and beard. Uh, big war hammer on the shoulder. The arm was a separate piece. Long cape. He's got several, he's got a tome there, a pouch. And uh, he's got some kind of uh, emblem on his uh, armor. Some coat of arms. He's got the full, you know, armor on. And the legs and the arms and everywhere. 
Oh yeah, nice looking figure as well. Then we got a whole bunch of um, children actually, uh, kid adventurers. So we have this girl here who has some scrolls. Oh, some scrolls there on the uh, on the belt. Big hood, <laughs> little kid with a big head. And uh, she's holding like some kind of scepter, it seems, uh, with a little skull on it. So she might be the party's necromancer. <laughs> here's a little bear. They do have some familiars. So here's a little bear creature. It's nice. Little fluffy teddy bear. Here is a fighter or maybe a barbarian. Yeah, it's a girl wielding... A shield. Maybe she's a shield maiden. She's got the axe. Looks a bit uh, Viking-like. The big hair. So yeah, that's cool. If you have a party of children going on an adventure, getting into trouble. Here's another uh, fighter with the, what looks like a dagger being wielded as a short sword. Got the braided hair. And I think pointy ears. This might be an elven child. So, yeah. Clothing. Compus. Next is um, this fellow here. So he's got a spear and he's carrying a big backpack with all kinds of gear. So and he's got like this very furry looking uh, these boots and clothing or is it a she? Oh there's a long braid along the side. It could be a girl. Yeah it's probably a girl. Looking at the hair, this is a girl. So she looks like, uh, you know, some kind of Nordic polar adventurer. Hunting for, you know, whales maybe, I don't know. <laughs> All right, then we have this little guy who is clearly a knight. With full armor, a warhammer, a shield, the helmet with the big feathers. It's pretty cool. And it looks like he has a toucan. No, wait, what is that? It's um, not a toucan, the other bird with the big beak <laughs> on the shoulder there. Is that a toucan? So that's pretty funny. Another little familiar there. This one I particularly like. Yeah, this is the rogue. Looking very badass with the double uh, crossbows there. <laughs> double wielding crossbows. You know, that's very, very cool looking. And he's also got this little familiar there at the base. Uh, looks like a, a ferret or something. A little creature. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, we have another creature here, a little uh, wolf. Wolf pup that can accompany, or maybe it's just a, a wolfish looking dog <laughs> that can accompany these kids. Then we have this, well, it looks like a wizard. He's got a scroll there and an owl on his hand. So that's pretty cool. A little wizard there with the nice coat. I really like that owl. It was also a multi-part miniature. Also comes with his own nicely sculpted base, as you can see there. Really nice looking base. So that's this guy. Then we've got a little billy goat with the big horns. And he's like a pack creature. 
you know, it's got uh, a pan and a bedroll and some other stuff, some pouches. So that's pretty nice. And another little creature here is this little uh, cat-like creature, a little lion or whatever. Oh, it's also cool. So all of these kids have a familiar, which is really nice. And finally, oh, that, there goes the base. <laughs> this one with the um, lantern and the sword. Looking a bit piratey, maybe. Uh, something on the back. And a pouch and, yeah, some items. So, yep, yeah, that's that one. Drop the base, I'll pick that up. And I believe we've covered all of these in this batch, so let's move on to the next. And here's another batch. This time we have some undead and some dragons, which look really cool. So let's start on the right here. Here is uh, one of the, uh, the golems in this set. Uh, there were several. Uh, this is a, well, look like a stone golem. He's rather big, nice and chunky. And I do believe we've seen this one in a smaller version in one of the previous Bones lines. I think I have the same one, uh, just regular human sized in the white PVC. And this is a bigger version in the gray plastic. Here is a uh, tainted glass golem, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Very unique. It's like a flat painted glass knight. And, uh, you know, you can use like transparent shades of paint on it so it will stay kind of transparent it's a really nice and unique idea so uh, this is a fun one so we have that so then we have two undead wolves zombie wolves if you will i like the uh, sculpting of the fur and the bases look nice so we have this one with one empty eye socket and one creepy looking eye and you can see the uh, the jaws where the skin is missing and some uh, some rot in the in the skin there so that's one of them and the other one has the ribs showing there also with the empty eye sockets and more ribs on the other side looks really cool so you have two of those, and there's a big one, and that's really cool, on its own base. I'll show you the base here. So the base has all of these uh, skeletal remains in the mud. And um, so the, the figure goes on like that. There's uh, little spots for the feet. And here's its head. So this is a two-part mini. You can see the seam here. You have to press that together really well and then the head kind of connects this part and that part as well so you put that on last also a really big one with the hollow eyes but the cool thing about this it's not just bigger than the others a uh, big undead wolf but as you can see its belly is open because the, the the flesh is gone you can see the rib cage and you can actually see inside. Now it's a bit, bit hard to show you that here. It's hard to get the light in. But if I take this apart, you can see there are ribs and a spine sculpted inside. So you can actually paint this first before putting it together, which is pretty cool. And then when it's put together, you can actually see uh, the ribs inside. So if you paint that white and red, then that might show inside. So that's pretty cool. Now it will be on its base, of course. So you really have to look at a certain angle uh, to the creature, but th that's really cool. I like that. So then we have some undead here. So it's just some undead knights. So we have this guy here, Revenants, if you will, 
with a nice shield with a dragon on it. So he's got a long axe. Then another revenant or draugr maybe because he has the Viking helm and the uh, the axe. He's got a full armor on. He's got an amulet and he's got a cape. So we have that one. Some undead army fellows. And we have this one with the helmet and the scimitar and a shield. So kind of looks they were all knights from different worlds, right? So this one looks a little bit more Eastern with the scimitar and the, the hair on top of the helmet and the type of armor. So, you know, three knights from different um, parts of the world turned into revenants. Now here, this is another a Lich King or something. He's floating. He's got a kind of weird looking stuff. He's got a sword, fully armored, and a billowing cape. Also looking really nice. Nice detail on that. I also like the base. And here's a, like an undead king. He's got the crown and the beard still. Sword. Again with the full armor. So lots of trinkets there and, and ribbons, decorations. He's got a scepter. So certainly a king. So we have that. Then we have two Grim Reapers, also pretty nice. We have this one. You can see the ribcage there, the, the skull. He's holding, I think that's an hourglass. Yeah, it looks like an hourglass. Uh, he's holding it at the top there. He's got the billowing cape, so a huge scythe, of course. And this is the back. He's standing on some rocks with some skulls hidden there. Also pretty cool. There's a couple more there. And the other one, again, was a multi-part figure. So I'm going to carefully pick that up and hope it stays together. I haven't glued everything yet. So here is a Reaper in full action. You know, wielding that scythe in two hands, just ready to strike. And you can see underneath the um, robes there, there is a skeletal foot and a leg. So that's pretty cool, nice detail. And there's his head under the hood. And he's also got the hourglass hanging from the belt there. Nice double billowing cake. He's got the robes and the cape. And the hand. This is a really nice dynamic pose and, you know, nice looking Grim Reaper. So that's a nice one. Then we have this undead giant. Now this definitely needs the hot water treatment. I'll start with the head here. So he's got uh, the cool looking uh, undead head. It looks like he's been uh, underwater for a while. He's got a uh, cartwheel around his neck. He's got several carrion birds on top of him. There's a vulture there and there, so he has the hand uh, hold. Uh, you know, he's got the hand positioned here, I wanted to say, and the other one is holding a club, or what looks like the remnants of a mast. You can see the ribs there, nicely detailed, and the, the cloth. And there's uh, something coming out of his stomach, <laughs> maybe some guts. A lot of detail also on the back. You can see all the decay, the holes. And he's wearing some, some metal banded iron and, and wooden poles around his feet. Maybe he's broken that leg in the past and that's like a, you know, place there to uh, set the bone. But this one is supposed to be standing a lot wider as you can see from the base. So this foot goes here. So as you can see, this has been bent quite a bit. 
I need to really bend this out a lot. So he's going to have a nice hot bath. But it's a pretty cool miniature, nice and large. And uh, still a lot of detail. And he's even got a little vulture buddy here. It's a very small, I hope that focuses, there you go. A little vulture buddy who can sit in the middle here on this little spot on the base between his legs. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And again, you can paint this first and then stick things on. So that is also very convenient. Then we have four more dragons. So these are also multi-part dragons. Um, I've put this one together. The wings are still loose, but um, he's got the two arms. Really nice looking scale detail there. I like the ridges on the back. Uh, lots of detail in the face there. And uh, yeah, really liking that sculpt and the, the musculature and all the ridges here. And uh, so the legs and the arms and the wings are all separate pieces. He's got two little bases on the feet, but he rests on the feet and the tail. So he will have three points. He'll always be stable. So that's well done, but you can always find a larger round base and stick them on that if you really want to. And uh, yeah, so the wings are nicely detailed on the top. They're kind of leathery, as you can see, and on the bottom as well. So uh, yeah, looks nice. You can see better here. And uh, yeah, the tail is nice. All the scales everywhere and the Talons, spikes. So yeah, this is a cool looking dragon. I really like that one. And we have a similar one here, who is equally large. Comes with its own base and it is connected to the base by the tail. So it's taking off or maybe it's just landing. The leg, the right leg, and the two arms are separate pieces, and so are the wings. This leg is already attached. So, uh, yeah, nice detail on the belly there and on the legs. And then the head here is also two part. The top of the head is a separate part. You can see the seam there. Um, so that's pretty nice. Look at the wings. All the leathery skin detail on the wings as well, and still the scales on the, uh, the fingers and on the back, that's the same. Looking really cool. So we have that one. So two rather large dragons. We have this little baby dragon here, which also comes with its own base. A relatively simple looking base there. Just some dirt and some rocks. And this is the figure so it also has a separate tail separate head and wings which i've glued on and uh, yeah it's just a fun small dragon looks the same as the bigger ones just uh, still younger for your first dragon encounters when you don't want to have your level one or two adventurers facing a, a huge dragon so it's good to have a couple of smaller ones as well. Has the same nice detail on the sculpts and on the wings. So that's that one. And finally, we have a wolf dragon, I believe. It's a, an odd one, but it has a wolf's head and, and kind of like feet. It has the physique of a wolf, but it's got a scaled tail scales along the back and huge wings and I really like the detail on the wings you can see the bones and the fingers and the veins and the flesh on the wings there so that's really nice kind of bat like almost also on the other underside there now you, you'll see a large gap this wing needs again hot water treatment and I think the other one as well because if I push them in, you can still see these, these little edges there that's supposed to go all the way in and uh, really have to press hard to get it to go all the way in. So 
that's gonna need a little bath as well. A lot of these figures do need the hot water treatment, but that's okay. It's a very simple and quick procedure. So yeah, that's that guy, the wolf dragon. So we also had a, a lion dragon or a dragon lion. And it also comes with its own base, a nice round base with rocks and stones. So there you go. And we're not done yet, so let's open up another batch. All right, so this is the final batch. Has a lot of transparent figures as well, spell effects. So let's take a look at the uh, gray ones first. So we have several things here. We have just a, a wall. You could, you know, cast a wall spell or just use this as a regular or old wall to block off a path. But it's a nice looking wall. Would be nice to have some more, but uh, yep, that's one of those. There's also a wall of brambles here, which comes in several parts. So uh, two of them I could stick in and would actually hold. So this is the front one here. That's one individual uh, bramble, a wall of thorns or whatever you want to call it. And on the back here, there's a double one uh, that is also one piece. And then here, there's room for uh, this piece. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so the final piece goes in here like that. So then you have a complete wall of brambles. And again, as usual, I need to uh, soak this in hot water so it fits better. So then you can paint them and put them all. I, I paint these first and then put them on the base uh, because that seems to be easier. So those are two wall spell effects, if you will. Um, there's uh, this floating disc. It's basically suspended in the air. There's some uh, clouds effects, smoke effects underneath on the base, the cobblestone base. So you can paint the cobblestones in gray, for example, and then maybe do a, a bluish wash on this or any color that you like. And same with this, you know, some red lines perhaps, or blue lines or yellow lines, something bright. And then you can put something on top of that and then it's floating. So that's uh, pretty cool. There's a uh, flaming sword, transparent flaming sword. If you're uh, casting an animated weapon. So there's that also pretty nice. There's this ghostly figure spell effect. Don't know exactly what kind of spell that would be, but uh, yeah, looks nice. Doesn't have many features in the face. He's pretty featureless. You can see the eyes and the hint of a nose. A ghostly figure. There's these three small spell effects that also came in the bag so i don't know exactly what they are couldn't find it on the um, kickstarter page there you go so there's like a little flame here if you're casting flame or light or something i guess there's this crystal with a kind of like a smoky or cloud effect surrounding it it's really hard to see i think and this is like a cone Cone of fire or something. I'm not quite sure how you would use these. They seem to have pegs. Well, this one I could just place on the ground straight up or just put down. But these two, they seem to have a little peg, but nothing really to peg them on. <laughs> so they're a bit strange. But I guess people can find uses for those as well. Then we've got uh, this invisible hand here. Uh, this hand is a fist, again on a cloud of smoke over a big uh, cobblestone base. That's pretty funny. This is a multi-part piece. So, you know, if you're costing... Uh, what's the spell again with the, with the helping hand? <laughs> 
and this one is grabbing something. This is one piece. So I'm unsure why that one is actually in three pieces. This is just one single piece. That's nice and neat detail. It's really big. It's a big two by two grid square base. So a two inch in diameter, I would say. And uh, it's, a, it's got a really nicely detailed hand with nails and everything. And then finally we have this one. Again, same hand. This one is kind of like stopping or holding something or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty fun. We played a um, game, d d game, where one of the players we use this, this invisible hand quite often to manipulate things. So yeah, that, that can come in handy. Then we've got some smaller figures. We've got some golems. So we have a clay golem here. Looks really cool. He comes in three parts. The arms are separate pieces. You can see the seams there and there. But he's a nicely detailed clay golem. Pretty cool. So there's that. Then we have this uh, metal or iron golem construct. It's completely metallic. It's got like this metal face, which is a separate piece. He's got the two arms are also separate pieces with a big shield, heavy armor and a sword. And this was also a separate piece. This uh, piece of cloth here in the back he's got a piece of piece of cloth in the front as well which made me wonder why would they bother making this a separate piece you can see the seam here if they still have that chunk of plastic behind it between the legs i mean if you're gonna make this a separate piece you could attach it to his butt and just have that whole chunk gone so you know there wasn't this big chunk of plastic between his legs you could actually sculpt the inside of the legs which would have been much better so kind of defeats the purpose of making this a separate piece. If you're going to fill that in with a big chunk of plastic anyway, this could have been one piece. So that's a bit of a missed opportunity, I think, for this figure. to have that big chunk of plastic in between the legs there. That could have been just the two flaps of cloth, which would have looked a lot better. But otherwise, this is a really nice looking figure. All right, and then we've got another character with a separate base. This is, I think, one of those um, species of constructs that you also have in D&D. I forget the name, but there's a whole species of metal men, basically, uh, robots, if you will. And uh, he looks like a sorcerer of that kind. He's got this uh, fire spell and he's got a staff so yeah nicely de nice details on the on the armor and the stuff that he's carrying and the cloak or cape so yeah and he comes with its own base and this one i really liked a lot this is a, a scarecrow on a really cool base with all of these pumpkins carved pumpkins and uh, it's a three-part model. The base and the, uh, the pole here are a separate piece. And basically this top part, there's a seam there with the arms is a separate piece. So you basically stick the arms with this top part against the figure. He's got a rib cage and clawed hands. So he's not just a puppet. He's actually got a rib cage. So kind of like... Uh, they actually hung a person as a scarecrow. And here is one cyclopean pumpkin. That's a nice touch. This is a really cool, scary looking scarecrow. We got another scarecrow here, a really big and chunky one. Look at that. It's a big one on a big base. Again, a two inch base, I believe. And uh, he's got a pumpkin head, the big hands, a scythe. This is actually attached to his arm. As you can see, it's inside the cloth, inside the jacket, and the rest is just straw poking out there. So they attach this. This is actually his, his arm. And that is also a separate piece. 
And the base is a separate piece too. A nice detail. You can see some corn on the ground there and even a skull. And that's fun. She was coming out of the cornfield and uh, hunched over, straw coming out of the clothing everywhere and the hand there. So yeah, really fun, cool looking piece. All right, so that's that. <clears throat> There's another golem here on a transparent base. It's completely transparent. So this is the base. And as you can see, all these little circles, those are coins. And uh, so he's the loot golem. There's some coins. There's even some, a few gems here and there, as you can see here in the circle. There's like uh, a tear shaped or a droplet shaped uh, crystal there. And this is the, uh, the golem and he fits on the base, but he doesn't fit quite well. Again, hot water treatment is needed, but he'll sit on there. And he's got a huge gem as a face or as a giant cyclopean eye there. And he's got some poles sticking out with some cloth in between. But there's a whole lot of detail on him. He's got all these coins. He's got weapons in there. And I kind of wonder why they made this one transparent. There's a chest here, a treasure chest on the back. And a little shield here on the shoulder. And he's also multi-part, the arms and this part, that's all separate parts. So you're going to have to, I think, wash this first with a light wash. So all the details and all the edges are more visible so that you can start painting all the coins, you know, in silver and gold, and bronze, copper, and then leave the eye as a transparent piece, perhaps, or make it a ruby or any kind of gem with a... Uh, with a transparent wash in the color you like so that it still has that transparency could could be an option he's got a blade here on the arm there so yeah it's a really cool looking golem but you really have to look at this thing up close to see all the details so wash this with a uh, ink or something or a light a thin uh, wash before you paint that to bring out all the details. That's what I would do. Now we got two more big pieces and I, I love these. This was, I believe, a stretch goal. I'm going to very carefully pick it up because it's, uh, again, multi-part that I just plugged in for now. But look at this. It's a beholder made of pumpkins. So you have the, the big cyclopean beholder center piece with the teeth and the eye on a stalk because you know it's supposed to be floating they, these things fly so they made kind of like a stalk connected to the base which once again has all of these little pumpkins rotten pumpkins as you can see they're they're all rotten rotting pumpkins so that's pretty fun and he's got all these tentacles with smaller evil looking pumpkins coming out from the back it's just so cool which would normally be the eyes of the beholder but it's so cool and it's huge this is a really cool piece to uh to paint for halloween for example that's the back so the detail is rough on this because it's so big it's not you know the base has a lot of detail here in the rotting pumpkins and the stones. Uh, this is not that detailed. But from the front, I mean, the faces are, have more detail. Especially this part, the mouth and the eyes. Definitely more detail went into that here, that ridge here. But this is certainly a really, really cool and fun piece to have. And finally, there's a crystal dragon, which is also a multi-part, and he's got wings, which I couldn't just push on. So there's the base, and there's a big rock, crystal rock jutting out, which is this. And that holds this figure, which is also, again, multi-part. It's got the tail and the head. The legs are on the body already, so he kind of sits 
here he holds this rock and he sits on it with the, the hind legs and the front leg there so he sits on that and he's got all these crystals jutting out of his skin they may be completely made from crystal uh, for all we know but uh, yeah looks really cool I hope that shows uh, well enough on camera see and this is also a two-part body which you just stick together but uh, there is some detail on the skin and it's it looks crystalline the head is a separate piece everything on him looks crystalline and that's pretty cool so you got these two huge wings so obviously the wings are only partly crystalline here some crystals and this is well you know skin and you can see the arm here and the fingers so this goes on here like so so it's got a very broad big wing there goes the head <laughs> big wings i'll try to show that to you and the other one goes here more or less like this so yeah this is basically the entire figure really big and you know it requires a lot of glue to uh, for that to hold nicely onto the base all right i believe we've looked at all of them and that was it final thing i still wanted to show you was another stretch goal we got which are sophie's lucky dice we just got a set of D, &D dice seven dice as a thank you and here they are so it's a basic set of D, D dice which has a d4 in black uh, with the numbers like this embossed and printed so that's the d4 we got a d6 here in uh, bone white with uh, regular numbers not dots then it also comes with a d8 in translucent orange and they're very very basic uh, dice there's the d10 here so the regular d10 is a black marble the well is that marbled I guess that's what you'd call marbled nice and swirly so that's the d8 we got the uh, percentage die or the d100 in red again the same marble swirly effect we have a d12 in a blue sparkly kind which i really like and finally a d20 in a very pale blue and those are the dice so we'll have to see if they are as lucky as a reaper makes them out to be <laughs> when we use them in the next dnd session all right thanks for watching so that was my unboxing of the reaper bones 5 sets from the latest kickstarter by reaper miniatures i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you hit the bell icon you'll also get notified whenever i upload a new video please also consider becoming a patreon saint to my channel by going to my patreon page you can click the link in the description below or the patreon logo at the end of this video which will take you there and you can already support my channel for as little as one dollar per month and that will get you your name in the credits of all of my videos and exclusive access to some exclusive videos on my Patreon page as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven. <laughs>